Hello and welcome to the Legacy Crusaders YouTube channel. This is Benji and today I'm joined by Master Dinnerflex. Say what up? Hello, it is me. I absorb souls. That is not relevant to this video. I'm part of the stars, as you can see. This was one of every infinite decks I could have done for this video. But I guess this is a perfect one to go over, isn't it? Oh yes, for sure. Uh, if anyone's not familiar with the series, I bring someone on who knows how to play a deck. They provide a deck list, and we play a few games on YGO Pro, and I try and ask the questions that you, the audience, would have. Now, Master Dinaflex has been doing several videos related to Satellar Knights even before the new support was announced. Now, the support doesn't come out for quite a while. We're just going to demonstrate some combos and things in-game, and maybe try to play through some boards that other people make. Uh, I'll let you run down any, like, particularities of the choices made in this deck list, because I'm not 100% familiar with all these cards myself at this point. So we'll just do All a quick right. card by card and then we'll discuss the card choices. So we have a three Lyra, three Deneb, two Altair, one Uncalhai, un one Vega, one Altea, one Sirius, one, uh, three Sheraton, one Cadaceus, one Heroic Challenger Knuckle Sword, three copies of ZS Ascended Sage, two copies of Photon Thrasher, three Teller Knight Constellar, one Satellar Knight Skybridge, one Gel Genesis, one Constellar Twinkle, one Reinforcement of the Army, one Call by the Grave, one Living Fossil, three Forbidden Droplet, three Book of Moon, three Phantom Knights of Shade Brigandine, and in the extra, two Constellar Cadacea, a Teller Knight Constellar Cadaceus, one Triver, one Ptolemaeus, one Dark Teller Knight Batlamas, uh, one Deltaros, one Pleiades, one Diamond, one Ptolemy N7, one Cyber Dragon Nova, one Cyber Dragon Affinity, one Ga 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 Magician, one Zeus, one Isold, one Apelizabo the Goddess, and a side deck of three Nibs, three Cosmic Cyclone, three Dark Ruler No More, a Harpy's Feather Duster, three Evenly Matched, a Baguska, and a Abyss Dweller. So if you can just run through some of the some of the card choices and like ratios and uh, for this deck, which again hasn't really been out yet, so I'm, I'm sure most people aren't too familiar with yeah. what's going to be expected ratios. So here is one thing before I explain any more into this deck list. This deck is far from the future, like five months. So it, the deck list you're seeing is what I call a blank. This is what would the deck list be if there was no such thing as a Yu-Gi-Oh format and it was ultimately designed basically in a vacuum. Because if I were to design it against Tier Lament or Kashtira or Bistials or blah, 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 that would already create a bias that any X card will be there by the time we get these. And that's just, that can create some issues in the future. So I just don't ever do that. And then second, Teller Knights have a reputation for being a Trap Hog deck, but how many cards in this deck list are just level four that summons themselves? Even our Trap cards oh. level four that summons itself. Yes. So what I noticed when testing this deck it really doesn't matter how many cards you throw at your opponent prior. The moment two level fours hit the board, you have full combo. So might as well just throw a bunch of rank fours at your opponent, try to pop, try to Zeus. And then even if everything fails or succeeds, you can just establish two level fours and play your hearts to your heart's content. That's basically the reasoning for why the deck is built like this. I think some of the only questionable choices would be the Gugaga Magician, the Teller Knight Genesis, and maxing out on the new Continuous Spell. The new Continuous Spell is broken. I don't know why you wouldn't play three. Sure, it like fixes monster heavy hands, but it also doesn't do that. It can fix like low monster hands. It can fix a grind game. Having more than one copy means... You could honestly play forever, which is like what the Sirius kind of does as well. And then Genesis. So every time I took it out of the deck list, the quality of my deck list decreased substantially. All the trap decks that are being designed like now, like the new Trap Tricks or Labyrinth, they're actually made to resist a Feather Duster, but they're not made to resist a Feather Duster like three or four times. So it's very strong. And... It hitting floodgates and random imperms or whatever is really strong. Uh, and then the Gaga Magician is actually the most important thing I want to talk about because this was something I did wrong in my demonstrations and I've seen a lot of other deck lists do wrong and I feel like it's my fault since I started it. Don't play the rank one because the level one can just turn itself into a level four and Gaga Magician is strictly better than the Knuckle Sword. Strictly. Or whatever the rank one is. I recall that uh, being specifically something that was unpronounceable on the channel. 
Yes. Uh, can basically revive the Deltros, which is what you only use this card for. But in addition, by playing Gaga, if you draw the equip, it means you. it doesn't matter that you drew it. It just means it's old isn't going to summon it out and the equip will be the level four. And if you draw the Knuckle Sword, if your combo doesn't use Sheraton or it is Sheraton with another level four, it's also full combo. So basically, because you're not using the rank one, Gaga Magician makes Azold much less important to resolve. And Gaga Ga is independently useful from Azold because it's a dark rank four that revives Xyz. And Altea is really nice with that. All right. Cool. So I'd like everyone to go to Master Dinaflex's channel and check out the multiple combo videos already up on Teller Knights. I think it's led to a couple other people trying out some other stuff. I've seen some things on like Lithium's channel as well. Yeah. Definitely some exploration of those combos needs to be seen there. I have watched them. It has been a while since I watched them because we talked about doing this a little bit in advance. So we're going to play a few matches and we're going to try and resolve the combo to the best of our ability. Hopefully we'll go first and get to do them uninterrupted. But if we get interrupted, we'll see what decisions we can make. But if you want to see the full combos with full details, they're definitely on your channel. Yeah. We can also do some combos, depending on the hand, where we set up something before we start playing. That can also be fun to demonstrate. Like an infinity or something like that? Yeah, that is a very real thing I do for it quite frequently. Just establish affinity before I start the normal combo. All right, cool. Can't wait to see how that will go. Someone called Look One. Uh, we lost the dice the roll? The thing is... Even this deck list has some tools by circumstance against uh, some common decks. Diamond is an insane tool against Tier Limit, and Book of Moon is a pseudo FTK against Kastira. Yeah, you pick some good choices to put in generically. Maybe we could have went with uh, Book of Eclipse, maybe, just in case we had to hit multiples. Yeah. But that's the kind of yeah. decisions you got to make for the format. Fossil yep. Dynast Stun. Oh, wow. That may be more problematic than planned. We'll see. Omega Engrave, Search Ecclesia. That feels like not the... What do they want to do? Just have Infinite that... Nadir Servant? Oh, for a second I thought they were going to do the Necro Valley Omega thing, and then we could have just left. Oh, the troll. The troll play where you just... Yeah. I... But they had it! Oh, they, they could have trolled could us. Have done... They could have trolled yeah. us so much harder. Yeah. It was a very real possibility. Totally honest, if they... Depends on what the back row is, because they haven't searched anything, and if we draw, like, a Droplet or Book of Moon, that automatically deals with that, but we did not. So I guess we're going to have to commit a normal summon that can beat over it, and just slowly see what we can commit. I guess Altea has the highest value, because even if it gets punishment, it's a value card in the graveyard. Even though Necro Valley's up, I'm aware, but it's something. All right, let's start with a normal of Altea and try to attack over Fossil Den. Yeah. Alrighty. Zones don't really matter for this deck, right? It's 99% Xyz and just thinking and as old. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. I can't think of any time where the zones would matter. Alrighty. Yeah, because pretty much the only other link you play is the Appaloosa, so we just use the Assault for that, so I guess it shouldn't matter. Yep, there's the punishment. That's what I was expecting. Yeah, it makes sense. Unfortunately, all these guys are really small. Yeah, drawing two Sheraton was annoying. This hand had a lot of normal summons. What's our ideal normal guess, summon uh, on a regular board state where we can special summon? For this instance, it would be Sheraton because the other pink one, the new pink one, would also summon itself in response. And because we have the Shade Brigadine, I believe that's four level fours before you even ever summon an XE. All right. So it looks like we're just, I guess, setting and passing. Is there even a reason yeah, to set it? You probably don't even have a reason to set it, yeah. Your opponent's on weenie beat, so it doesn't really matter. It's not like you're trying to defend yourself. Yeah, I was always thinking there's always a chance, but if we ever get forced into milling a trap card, then we're behind a turn on the set of us. We're going to probably lose anyway, just because we couldn't clear the Fossil Dyna immediately. Yeah, but this Fossil Dyna is also keeping our opponent from doing anything at all. That the is... truth is, we're given a lot of time against a Fossil Dyna because our opponent committed to playing a stun deck. So we have two or three turns to draw an out. Possibly. Or maybe, like, arguably two. Oh, there. Because, that's uh, a Gravekeeper deck. That makes a lot more sense. I think it's just done. I don't think there's any real strategy behind it. That's also Besides possible. your opponent, no play. I thought they would just, like, normal the 
Ecclesia and just search more punishments. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't do that, honestly. Maybe they drew the card they needed. All right, so I guess you could commit Altier, have it crash. Again, we're trying to see how many interactions we can force out of our opponents, so let's see what this Altier is going to have happen. Yeah, I'd imagine it's just another punishment, which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're getting anywhere. We're soft locked out of the game, and we never had the opportunity. That's right, we'll get him in game two when we go first. All right, so Skybridge, targeted Teller Knight you control, special Teller Knight from a, with a different name from the deck. So this is usually played like the fourth copy of Deneb, right? No, this is actually a card you use to make a board that is resistant to Dark Ruler. Yeah, that's just game. You can go ahead and skip. All right. Because that's the third punishment. Okay, we're up against the Stun. Recommended sides. Probably Cosmic Cycle. And Droplet's probably useless, even though... There are things you can turn off with it. You don't actually want to spend a bunch of cards for no reason. I guess this Esther as well, just to be safe. Just have it in the deck to exist. Yeah, you could probably cut Sirius since it is an extra. This is just the shuffle back draw one. Okay. Yeah. All right, looks good. And uh, we're going first, so I guess we just make it so that they can't play. Yeah. And then game three, we'll have all these anti-opponent cards... Because basically you won't need to ch change your side deck for the rest of the game. Because these are good regardless of whose turn is whose, because our opponent has such a slow... They did. It's... <laughs> One thing about this site, there are plenty of people who just want to troll. And the moment they lock out a game, they just quit or lock you into thinking a game's continuing. Yeah. All right, this hand is nuts. So, remember how I said two level fours is the full combo? So something I like to do is, can I establish three level fours before I establish two level fours? Because that is infinity. And I believe you can do it with this hand, but you'd want to start with Photon Thrasher. Because Th Thrasher is like the most go starting play card in comparison to Sage. Now, I guess you can go ahead and Rota for Vega. Or you can Rota for the new pink one. Lyra? I think new pink one will be better. Okay. And then you will normal summon to Neb. And in that same chain link in the TCG, which I don't know if you have those settings, I do. it will activate as chain link two. All right. So Deneb one, Lyra two as a chain block. Yep. Always turn that setting on. Can't play Edo Pro without playing TCG rulings. Yep. Preferable search. And Deneb, let Deneb search, let Deneb search Altea. So we have already used this normal summon. Okay, yeah, because we didn't use Vega, we can go ahead and search Skybridge with this. I just, I don't believe our opponent is on any relevant hand trap. It wouldn't I make think sense just... in their trap deck. All right. Yeah, I think that at best they're doing like golems and kaiju stuff. So you'd want to turn the Deneb into Vega with Skybridge. And then the Vega will summon out Altea. Now, overlay the Vega, the Altea, and the Thrasher into Tolmaius. One more time, just to make sure I don't screw that up. Vega. It has to be Vega because it is locking you into Teller Knights. Gotcha. Vega. And then Altea. And Thrasher. And then Thrasher, yes. And that should be good enough. Yeah, I wasn't used to it asking me if I would like to use a and fourth that's one. that's Nova. And that's Nova. And then on Nova Summon, Altea will summon itself back. Oh. Didn't ask on Nova Summon on Infinity Oh, summon? no, my bad. It doesn't. My bad. Being dumb. Infinity. And then the Sc uh, Teller Knight Constellar, which is such a weird name to memorize. That's just going to revive the other level four you need. Oh, okay. And then I guess we can save Altea for a better opportunity. So just go ahead and revive Vega with it. Hold on. Special A, Teller Knight, or a Stellar Monster from your hand or graveyard. Yeah, I'm still getting used to some of these as well. All right. Yeah. Revive Vega. Yep. And that is the two level fours you need for the combo. You do not need to revive Altea right now. Okay. And which one are we making again? And you're the new Constellar Cadaceus. Gotcha. And that one is going to recycle the Skybridge. Oh, we can add two? Yeah, but we just want to add Skybridge. Makes sense. I just didn't expect it to keep asking for more. 
All right. Yeah, it can add back a Constellar and or Teller Knight card. Gotcha. So it can do two. Now we are going to go ahead and activate Cadaceus. So you can attach whichever material you want. But right now you're going to banish Sheraton, which is a level three. All right. And that will add the main deck Cadaceus. And I think I'd rather have follow up against a stun deck. So go ahead and summon it with its own effect. And we will add another Constellar Teller Knight from our deck to our hand. We are going to overlay M7 on top of the Constellar XC. And this triggers Twinkle in some way, right? N uh, I, I might be misremembering the combo. Yeah, so Teller Knight Constellar, we can activate it to target the M7 to turn it into Deltaros. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I think it was just mixing up the way it works. Yeah. All right, Deltaros. And then the Deltaros, we're going to activate its effect to target itself and destroy it. Then Deltaros is going to trigger to summon Altier out of the deck, which is the old blue. Yeah, this I do know the old ones. Yeah. And then Altier will revive Deltaros. And this is honestly when I started coming up with combos for Teller Knights way back then, is when I learned Deltaros doesn't need XE materials to float. The other one does, right? So yeah, the other one does, right. but Deltaros doesn't, so you just summon from deck again and again. So Isold? Correct. And you'll obviously chain block Deltaros, CL1, and then Isold, CL2. The search for Isold will always be Altier for follow-up. And you've already used the Altier already, so you're not losing anything. And then the Deltaros, depending on what has happened is what I search with it, but we've already used... Oh. I think we used everything, right? We, yeah, the only thing we haven't used is Unakali, which we'll summon that and just dump a Deneb. All right. And uh, right now we can use Azold to summon the level one out of the deck. And the level one has an effect that you target another warrior and you either ch you change one of the monster's levels to another. So you're going to target uh, Unu twice because you want it to be level four. Oh. And now you'll overlay those two level fours into Gaga Magician. Any particular level fours or just these two? Use the Constellar and the Heroic because we want to have Teller Knight names up. Now, go ahead and detach and revive the Deltaros one more time. And then let's get a check on the, all the Teller Knight names in your grave. Okay. One Deneb. One, two, two, two three, four... Five. Six. All right, you'll be good to go. Go ahead and link off Gagaga, -ga -ga, Deltaros, and his old into Apollosa. Gagaga, -ga -ga, Deltaros, and his old. Yep. And then the Deltaros will trigger one last time. What you summon is honestly irrelevant. Yeah. And you'll overlay those two level fours into Batman. And because we have seven Teller Knights in our grave, it's a quick effect now. Gotcha. And you want to set the Sky Bridge, because it's a way to establish a disruption against Dark Ruler. Gotcha. All right, so that's full combo. A little complicated. It takes a little practice, I guess, getting used to that. Yeah, it also is a little bit like old school Infernity, where once you get it going, you know what you're doing. But getting the setup is actually a lot more complicated. Even though it's only two level fours to establish, obviously just throwing everything into a blank hand where there's obviously going to be some disruptions, it's not ideal. Just like why the infinity's there. Gotcha. All right, it's cool. We managed to do all this with an infinity, and all this could have been done with... We had three level fours, right? Because we had a slightly better hand? Uh, We had a slightly above average hand, yeah. But again, my level of hand is like... You drew more than just two level fours and summon themselves. <laughs> that is full combo. So, like, a good hand is, like, good names. Like, drawing good names. Gotcha. There's a one-card combo, though, right? With, I think, Sheridan? Memories? Uh, right? Yeah, I believe you don't establish the infinity in the one-card combo, but this is obviously, like, you have a five-card hand. 
Okay. Well, our opponent's taking a minute. They may have uh, went to get something to eat while, while I was comboing. <laughs> yeah. Or they may have rage quit. Also a possibility. Yeah, it's a possibility. We'll give them a minute. See if they wake up. I set a fairly long timer in the event that the combos are complicated. Yeah, like this one. Yeah, it is. Like uh, this one. I'm sure I can do it a little faster on the next go around. And uh, whenever we yeah. have a big complicated decision, uh, we'll just make a decision on what we're going to do and we can talk about the other alternatives on their turn if possible. Because their turns are yeah. generally going to be pretty straightforward. Yeah, I am a big fan that I really wanted to show off like establishing things before you start your combo. And we, that's just the first game we played and just did that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's been a while since Ptolemaeus into Infinity was a thing. What's everybody trying to do this into now? Diamond mostly, and what's the alternatives? Diamond. The other alternative, which this deck list can do, but there's a reason I try to avoid it. You can establish a 7 material Amaius, but I, the reason I didn't do that, which this I don't believe this hand could even do it anyways. I think it might have, though, <laughs> secretly. The reason I try to avoid that is because the things this deck lose to, that combo loses to harder. If this doesn't give you a win you wouldn't have already had, but it might give you a loss that was creeping around the corner, which is why I try to avoid that combo, unless I just know my opponent has no interest in interacting with me. But I had a feeling they probably had some kind of something, which is why I went for the Infinity instead. There. At this point, they've made zero plays. We will move on to another game. So we'll just take a loss here and start a new match. Yep. And this time we'll be able to combo faster. Yeah. All right. Also, don't... Uh, one of the things to remember is because this is an XE deck, we have a lot of really nice going second tools, mainly in the form of Zeus. But in addition, like... Trevair, Infinity is actually pretty good at going second as well, shockingly. Like, you, you're actually given a lot of tools to help interact with the board. Speaking of which, your opening hand kind of demonstrates that. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting opening hand. Droplet, send Deneb, Altair, summon Deneb, bring back Deneb, search a card, overlay for a Teller, attack, make Zeus, send cards. I feel like that would work, right? Yeah. So, also, one of the really cool things is uh, two level fours, because of the new Constellar, is always a two uses, because you overlay M7 on it. I love M7. So, yeah. I never played enough decks that can actually hard make it, so I always wind up doing everything late. I feel like, what is this? This is a Sword Cell. Sword Cell's been fairly simple to beat in terms of like interactions they produce, unless they get black out, in which case we might not get the bodies necessary. It can depend. I... Sword Soul is like the poster child of fair deck. I'm pretty confident in it. Yeah, it's pretty and modern. Beating fair. Ash, it's a, it's yeah. It's like my favorite thing to play against on like Master Duel, <laughs> just because. Oh, uh, that's an interesting board starter. I guess they. What? Okay. That is interesting. Oh, I see what they're doing. I see what they're doing. They have to have long yen. Yeah, that's possible. I feel like they would have done that part first, though, wouldn't they? Because it's Baron and Baron Pop. I guess they had to... Oh, yeah, you're right. It. They're just passing. Okay. Okay, so what I'm assuming they have is a blackout. So that means... No problem. I don't think it's so an obvious... So we can take it very slow because we do just have full interactions here. Because even if they just clear all our monsters, we still have three back row. Like, we can actually take our time... So let's just start with a Sheraton and search Cadaceus. All right. Just important to be mindful. Remember that Yazi can't be targeted, so the Book of Moon is not an option for specifically yeah, the Yazi. I'm, yeah, I'm aware. I'm more talking about their whatever they're going to summon off Yazi is going to be the more important factor. Gotcha. Cadaceus? Plus, I'm assuming Blackout, so it's going to get popped and floating to something, which is what why I'm thinking we should make a very conservative not much play because we have a lot of back road to stop whatever they do the follow-up gotcha you said so Cadacius, let's go right? sheraton oh Sh sheraton so uh, Cadacius, my bad that's all right I, it's just been a while i make sure i didn't misremember all right do you summon itself yes we will see what they have it'd be reckless for them to i don't even know if they can use blackout right now it's been a bit let's see what they do to this nothing so we'll actually search twinkle here I feel like this would have been the place to make that move if they had it just before we take our ignition opportunity. Yeah. The moment I saw their passing priority is... Oh, interesting. Can you think of a reason so, to droplet send Cadaceus? 
Uh, no, I can actually think of a reason to... Now, let's think about this. So, the impermanent, if we book it, that blanks a level 4. Yeah, so the problem here is there's no gain in booking it except to get a follow-up. And at the cost of that follow-up, we are trading disruption for their turn. So I guess this is honestly up to you because it's a 50-50. Do you want to get a guaranteed follow-up or do you want to save a disruption for their turn? Uh, I guess we should save it for their turn. All right, then just let the Imperm resolve. All right, ain't much we can do with these guys at this point, right? Except make these hold. No. Which we probably uh, want to no, save. No, because neither of them are warrior. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, they are dead end most of the time. It's They are some of the most fragile parts, but Sheraton and Cadaceus as main deck monsters is required because of the earlier demonstrations I was giving where you have to banish a Sheraton to search Cadaceus. Gotcha. There's no other way to get to that. All right, so we're just passing here, though, right? Just set three? And, yeah, and... because even if they pop something, they can't pop everything. Yeah. I guess the worst thing that can happen is that is blackout. Yeah. I'm assuming. Oh, wow. Stop blackout. I, I'm just shocked, honestly. It's probably another imperm. Yeah. Now, if we don't want them to de definitively float into something, so they went for the droplet, we could negate it, but if we keep Cadaceus, they can just crash it, or we could. I. Yeah, let's just see what they float into. Okay. I think we're better off doing that. Yeah, also droplets, what, once per turn we have two, no reason to commit to... Yeah, we have two, we had two, and a book of moon. So even if the other droplet doesn't solve everything, the book probably will. Okay, booking that could oh, be really good. Oh, we can book that immediately, yeah. yeah you get out of here, Taye, you know, stay face down. There is, there was one thing, though, I was considering... Our opponent hasn't shown us this, and I don't even know if they have any access to it. I was considering saving the Book of Moon for, uh, what's it called? The level 6, because Droplet can't interact with it, but doesn't seem to matter that much. Yeah. I guess we can let them banish a card. I guess we don't really want them to banish a card. At Hara would add uh, back. They'll banish for cost regardless. I guess they if can. If they want a card banished. Yeah. And since they're summoning Taiye, I'd imagine they don't have a worm in hand. I guess we should droplet yeah. it and prevent them from going off, right? Yep. What should we send? This we don't really care about it crashing, so do we want uh, to... Sheraton is pretty useless, because we don't even have the spell to make it level 4. So they have a trap or spell interaction. It could just be an imperm. It, is, it would be legal to activate there. It would also yeah. make sense why they didn't use it last turn, because it's just there wasn't any real reason to. Yep. Although we could probably force it with... Oh, they want to crash? Oh. That was weird. <laughs> no. I mean, they're probably... I guess not. Oh, weird. I don't know. Ooh. Oh, that's a strong... Okay, so... I guess you'll start off with the Neb. See what you can recruit from that. Yep, Droplet. I guess you can chain the Genesis to get rid of the last one. One thing to keep in mind with Genesis is it's equal to the number of Teller Knight cards you control, so... Try to avoid cards keyword so that means the spells as well and oh. if they have if you have if they have less than your number of targets you gotta destroy some of your own stuff but again it's usually not a factor because you're the one in control but now you can just go into oh you can activate Cadaceus now let's do that first oh yeah yeah it's not a non-summon it's a once per turn what do we want? So you will get the new one. Constellar. Teller Knight Constellar. I'll be honest, I don't remember which ones are old and which ones <laughs> yeah, are new. Yeah, they're it's all new to you. Other than Vega, yeah. Uncalhai, Neb, and the other yeah. one. <laughs> Twinkle looks new, but it's eight years old. It's crazy. Gotcha. Uh, now you can make the XC Cadaceus, and you get to recycle back some stuff. All right, on summon, add back. Yeah, just add back both. Both? Oh, okay. So yep, it's just... It's, it's one of each. Oh, uh, okay. One spell, one monster. Or one teller, yep. one consteller. Oh. And then with this, you can go ahead and detach and banish, honestly, whatever. Whatever you want to... What effect do you want to resolve? Do you want to resolve uh, Sheraton? I don't know where add? we're going with the combo, so I'm going to need your uh, expertise. Go ahead and... Maybe Vega? So do we can... Deneb. Banish, banish Deneb. Okay. So you can add Vega. Attach, whatever, add Vega. 
and now you'll turn that into M7. And now you'll activate uh, the new spell, and it will summon Vega out of hand, which will summon Altier out of hand. Someone once described this deck as the uh, friends deck. Everybody brings a friend. Yeah, I mean, like three of them do. Yeah. The other several don't do anything for their time period. All right. Now you can turn the M7 into Deltros. Do you want to just go for a game? Or... Oh, wait. I don't think there's a way to game, because one of the things I will warn you about this deck is Altier has a restriction, attack restriction, and Altea has an attack restriction. It's actually a little annoying to try to muster a game. We haven't used Altier. Deltros. I don't believe there is a way to 8,000 through that monster, so you'll just go ahead and make M7 Deltros with the spell. Alrighty. And then Deltros will... You can pop that or whatever, and you'll just have to link off one of the warriors. I believe my YGO Pro is freezing. Oh, or our opponent scooped. Fair enough. Yeah, they, they, it was game regardless, because they were... We were going to have multiple disruptions for their exact one top deck and their... They did have Adhara and Graves, so who knows if they could have done yeah, a but lot. Yeah, but... again, we would have a disruption for that and their top deck. It was over. All right, thoughts on side for Sword Soul. I would imagine Dark Ruler or Evenly. Yeah, they're both pretty good, but I'm trying to think what our opponent did game one, and they summoned Yazi as a wall, so... All they, I was, don't know. all they had was Edhara and Abyssal. Um, yeah, it's hard to judge how our opponent's playing their deck, but I think evenly matched uh, is a perfect call. And maybe some kind of mixture of Dark Ruler and back row removal, I can't entirely tell. All right. So what can we I cut? think it would Dark Ruler would probably be better than Droplet, though. Okay. What should we... Uh, we're four over. What would be, like, yeah. logical cuts? Book of Moon. Okay. Card isn't particularly helpful against the deck like it's neat it can do st some stuff but the cards we're putting in are strictly better at it and have a much higher longevity maybe called guy i guess thrasher oh thrasher okay called by is also a good call if you want to because i don't think our opponent used a single regular hand trap let's put in a nib it'll be funny sounds good because we're gonna draw that nib watch oh, of course and if we don't we never want to see it because it's a terrible six yeah card. yeah that's why you side things at one, so that you either open them or you don't see them ever. Yeah, it literally, oh, playing one of it is a 50-50 chance of opening it. You either do or don't. 50-50. Apologies to anyone who hears a little sizzle in the background. My heater came on, so it's slightly making a noise. See, we didn't want to draw it, of course. Yeah, yeah, we didn't. We don't need All it. All plans. If we're going first, this is... Perfectly acceptable. This hand. hand is nuts going first, and this hand is actually pretty strong going second, depending on what our opponent establishes, of course. How's this deck like, feel about this? Vanilla Bistuals? ignore vanilla ignore floodgates. This will probably break what our opponent does, depending on how heavy their hand is, but we'll see. Alright. They get the standard combo. Search one, draw one, or engage. Engage. Yeah. I think Moye is such an insane card when you just sit down and reread it multiple times. It's a starter that just also draws you a card for no reason. A free level 8 synchro that also gets you a draw. That is so insane. Oh, so one and of the that hands where that nib would have been so good. Yep. Don't worry, it's our sixth card. It better not be. Oh man. <laughs> All right, so what did they search? They searched long one, right? So the traps could be yeah. anything. Those are randoms. You'll start with Thrasher, like, like normal. And I guess you should establish the Shade Brigadine. Let's see how much power we can establish before ever normal summoning. Uh, oh, God. Well, I think we know what the game plan is now. It's... Yeah, make the largest Apollosa possible. I don't think it's that big. Unfortunately. Yeah, don't make us old. We already drew the equip spell, so it won't have any real value. Oh, okay. What do we do? Normal Deneb. Chain Link 1 will be pink, and Chain Link 2 will be Deneb. Oh, the one problem with this is they can both. I'm not uh, sure that matters. I, yeah, kind of. I, yeah. We'll see. Well, we have no Xe play, so we're really just trying to get format Apo, which honestly still loses to this, really. 
I guess what that's actually the preferable thing for them to do is to just waste the negate on this, because we could attack over Baron. With Apollosa, yeah. yeah. So, let's think. If we want to activate that or not. We can uh, bring it back with Fossil Living Fossil. Yeah, go ahead and activate it. It'd be nice not to, just because then we definitively... I mean, I love if the card resolves, and if it does, we're actually vibing, but I don't think it will. They realistically should negate this. Dang it. Yeah. How dare they make a good play. All right. Yeah, so here's the thing. When you revive it back, it's always a Constellar monster, so we can summon Sheraton with it. So go ahead, Living Fossil, back the uh, the pink one. All righty. And you can now special summon Sheraton, the hand. Oh, the Caduceus, sorry. Yeah, I keep for forgetting their names. It's all good. It doesn't help that they put one in the extra deck and one in the main deck. Yeah. And this Caduceus will search what we were trying to get to, which is Teller Knight Constellar. Or it won't. But I'm actually more fine with that because our opponent is spending a lot of cards. Yeah. So now, let's just link away everything except the Photon Thrasher for Apollosa and just beat over the Baron. Yeah, the biggest problem with this is that it's really easy for him to out the Appaloosa next turn. Yeah. I did not expect a D-Barrier. Yeah, I wonder honestly. what they're playing it for. I guess Tier... It's not, like, the worst card to play. It's not... Pretty bad against Tier as well, especially in Sword Soul case. In the case of Sword Soul specifically, it's not very good. Because they don't have that many ways to interact with Tier Limit Graveyard effects, which is... You usually want... That to hit some Yuzu stuff because even if you like prevent them from fusion, you have to do it on both turns. Whereas I think it's pretty clear we lose right here, <laughs> just because yeah. I mean there is I guess the chance they don't do that. Well, that establishes that. All right, so now we get to go first I... against Sword Soul. Yeah, got the Evenlies put back in the Thrasher. Uh, yeah, Book of Moon is also much better against the deck when they're playing into us. I guess Droplet's better just because we're going first and can set it. Yeah. Called by should be do something now. Cut nib. Go back to regular main yeah. deck, I guess. So oh, where's this Thresher? Oh, the Duster. Yeah. Yeah, this looks solid. Back to regular. All right. We have things. What do we do? This hand is exactly full combo, but it is not much more than that. So you'll go ahead and summon to Neb. That's our desirable search target. It'll be the pink one. The new pink one, Lyra, I believe. Alrighty. Alright. And then we'll activate the spell, which will summon Lyra out of hand. And Lyra's a Constellar card on summon search? Yeah. Okay. I guess you can get Skybridge if you want. I don't think Genesis will be as good right now. And I don't think follow-up is that much better either, because Sword Soul is not a deck that really follows up anything. It Right. Goes all in and hopes that's enough. Gotcha. A summon Cadaceus yeah. while we can? Yeah. And this one, we can actually search another follow-up. What do we want? Const Constellar. The twink not Twinkle. <laughs> the other one. Not Twinkle. And Got these it. names are... Yeah, yeah, names are all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Now we can turn... Yeah, let's go ahead. Actually, before we commit to the XE, let's Skybridge the Neb into another name to get another... Uh, kind of effect. I think Unu Kali would be good. I would rather us recycle the Skybridge so we're getting like maximum value. Gotcha. All right. Because I was thinking there's not too much reason to really fire this off. I guess I forgot. We're just going to add yeah. it back to hand. Yeah. And Unu will send Altea. Our opponent is on Bistials, which is what I'm accounting for. And I'd rather them commit it on our terms than theirs. Oh, wow, they're just imperming that. Interesting. Does this affect any playline, really? Not at all. No, not at all. I just find it a little weird. So you'll overlay the Unu and either one or the other to make the Constellar. These options to and you'll... use more than one is really weird. All right. Yeah. And I'll get Skybridge. And then what other... Here's the cool thing about the XC. It's copying the effect, but it's not applying it as if it was. So if you want another Deneb search, you can actually do it with this. I don't know where that goes 100% to comment. So let's go ahead and get another Deneb search. All right. So banish Deneb? Because... Or... 
Yes. So Banish. Detach one. Should oh, I think I definitely did the wrong one. I don't think it mattered. Okay. And we'll add Altea. Uh, one of the things is there's a lot of benefit, which is what this is doing on maximizing the number of level fours you will establish. But now we can go into M7. Don't use that yet. Oh, oh it's too late. Whoops. I you thought that's to how make you do M7 it. First. My bad. Nope. Right. That basically ends our turn. No problem. So everyone realize make M7 then rank down into... I guess we got to establish Pleiades here. Yeah, my bad. Whoops. It is what it is. I thought I had uh, it. I was trying we'll... to show that I got it, and then I did the wrong thing. All right. Yeah, so I guess just establish all your back row. Keep everything, set everything except the new spell. Okay, and then hopefully this doesn't... Oh, hopefully this is good enough against Worm Teller Knights. <laughs> They're going to summon Moye, and we're just going to bounce the token. But we'll see. Let's see what our opponent does. Dark Hole. Interesting. Use Pallades to bounce back Thaseus. That way we have even more follow-up. How bad would our board have lost to Dark Hole anyway? I guess there's a chance it might have, right? No, I believe we could have established Infinity, but Dark Hole drop is a little different. Oh, okay. Yeah, then maybe we were in the same place. Yeah. Same place as in Two Book of Moons against a deck that can't fight against set materials. All right. So you get to search whatever they need. Yeah. And then at the summon of their token, just set the Moye. Force them, if they have the quick play, they're going to be forced to use it to summon Long Yoon, and then we'll use the other Book of Moon against Long Yoon, and then they're just stuck. Hopefully by that time they'll just be, like, out of cards. Yeah. That's a very real possibility. Which is, yep, there's the Long Yoon, so we'll have to set that as well. Now, they will get a bounce with the Shuda, but the only thing they could bounce is something that doesn't matter or benefits us. They didn't summon a token. That may have been them hoping we wouldn't notice and interrupt again. Yeah. They bounce the Skybridge. That doesn't matter. And if they bounce the continuous spell, that benefits us. So the Shuda is very irrelevant. Yep, and that's enough, as I expected. Gotcha. So we'll have to normal summon Altea because the pink will summon itself on that normal summon. And uh, add a spell. The code we could go for some regular plays or we can meme the rest of the game. Which do you want to do? I'm down to meme. Grab a spell? Yes. Just in case there's like a better time to do it. I just don't know. All right. I assume. For the rest of the game, we could just Trevere loop because I think we have Sirius and Dex still, right? Yeah, we do. Sure, we'll lose to Long. But it will only you lose to Long Yoon if it doesn't get hit out of the hand with Trevair. Guess we grab Instellar, Teller Knight Instellar. You can add Genesis instead because we already have multiple established. Oh, I figured we were gonna be activating this one and both of when on activation it lets a special one, right? So yeah, you know what? Yeah, go ahead and search the last one just to get it out of the deck at least. Also, I don't suspect they'll get back row up for Genesis to do anything. Yeah. Where are we going? So, let's check your graveyard real quick. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and make the other Constellar Sheraton. And this one's going to put... The Cadaceous? Back the f yeah, the Cadaceous. It's going to put back the first copy in your graveyard and recycle the main deck Cadaceous to your hand. That's one of the neat things about playing two of that card. It's at infinite. Gotcha. Right. And we can just go ahead and summon Cadaceous. And this one, we will go ahead and add Twinkle. Now, one thing is, I didn't add Pallades back to Extra Deck in this play, so we won't be able to access it this turn, but I would like the ability that if this is going to be drawn out, we can just establish Pallades whenever, which is why we search the Twinkle. Gotcha. And it's our only search target left. Gotcha. We can go ahead and copy with the XZ Cadaceous if you want to. Okay, what are we copying? Let's check our deck. There is not a lot here. I guess just a neb for an altier for the follow-up, because I'd rather us just reduce the number of cards our opponent has for the rest of the game than trying to full combo. There's no point at the... A full combo would probably prevent us from attacking over what they have right now. So let's just go for uh, just a card advantage game, like old school GOAT. All right. 
I guess we can activate one of those Tellernite Constellars to revive whatever. It's up to you what you want to revive. I would say keep the Altea in gray for a bit. Okay, let's see. Is there anything worth dumping from the deck with Onkalhai? I don't think so, right? Outside of Genesis, no, but I don't think that matters. Unu can actually dump spells, which is a cool thing. It doesn't matter very often, except with XC, All right. the new one. I want to use Altea to, like, pop a bunch of cards, so actually revive Pallades, even though it's not going to have an effect. Okay. We're not going to pop with it yet. We're going to establish one more XE. Let's go for M7, and then... Oh, either one? Whichever one you want to. I guess Pallades would be a little better, because it does nothing, where at least the... Cadaceus can do something next turn. All right. Now let's go ahead and Altea. And we're going to pop everything but the token. And then we can over... Let's check our extra deck one more time. Can we just OTK them wanna... by ranking down into Delteros and popping the token and attacking? So here's the thing. Like I said, this deck has a lot of attack restrictions in a lot of weird places. One oh. of them is Altea prevents anything from attacking except Xyz, uh, like Dark Xyz. Gotcha, gotcha. And then Altier is the only thing that can attack or tell night monsters. Gotcha. So I don't think we'll have game, but I think we can establish enough that the game's pretty much over. Okay. Let's check the extra deck again. I was not looking. There's more uh, in the extra deck than that. Just to... Yeah, I want to see every option. Yeah, let's go ahead and... I think we should attack with what we have right now because I don't believe they have much of... Yeah, they only have the Shuda in their grave. So that means if we can just negate a token spawner, that's the same as them being on one card. Fair enough. So a uh, main phase two will go into Deltaros, turning the M7 into Deltaros. And then Deltaros will pop itself Altier... And then Altier will revive the Deltaros. And uh, we'll overlay the Altier, the Altea, and the Cadaceus main deck into Maya, Nova, Infinity. And then we'll overlay Diamond on top of the Deltaros. Okay, I actually followed all of that. Yeah. Which impresses me since I'm still trying to remind myself which one's which. This is just so many. Yeah, the, their names are all over the place. I, and I, a lot I of used different to know languages. them, I swear, I swear. <laughs> Listen, I do not memorize Yu-Gi-Oh card names very well. I still sometimes call Kashtira Creme Brulee because I remember that name more than their actual one. If you want to meme harder, you can also establish Zeus on the Cadaceus because you still have the third copy of uh, that for follow-up. Yep. It's a pretty mild board, I will say. Yeah, let's see if uh, they can do anything through this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not great with memorizing card names because some of them are obnoxious and very difficult to memorize, so I just call them whatever name I can think of. Oh, uh, like Creme Brulee for Kestira, and uh, there's another one recently. Yep, like I thought so. They have to establish a token spawner, which you can just negate with infinity. All right. There's nothing that they would banish that actually does something productive. Yeah, we should have it here. The only thing they could have had to help would banishing a trap, but they don't have any. Yeah, if they had a copy of that. All right, let's see it. Let's see that last card. Search a card. Ooh. What can they search that does anything? And the answer is I don't believe anything, realistically. Uh, nothing at all. Actually, nothing at all. Definitely not that. Yeah. And even if they did, like, you're, they're still facing down a Zeus and a uh, Pop. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm in a pop. Yep. That's how that goes. Yeah. All right, let's go back to deck list, discuss some things that may or may not have come up. Yep. All right, I would say so, Sword Soul as a matchup was a good one to explore what this deck does without really worrying about the format. As you mentioned, it is like the fairest of kinds of fair yeah. decks nowadays. Yeah. But what have we not seen so far? Honestly, I think we've seen everything the deck list has to offer you, which is actually a really nice demonstration. I love it. You showed off going second, you showed off playing around like hand traps and stuff with the infinity. I think you demonstrated the deck list perfectly. I think the only thing <laughs> you also demonstrated the misplay and playing through it. The only thing the demonstration didn't show is like twinkle lines, but again, those rarely matter. So that wasn't much of a loss. Right. Uh, and in addition, 
I think this was a perfect example of how Sheraton is the strongest fragile starter in the deck. And man, I wish this card was level four. Yeah. Huh. It's the Constellar Tour Guide, the Hand Trap Magnet. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. If there's nothing else to add, everyone check out Master Dinnerflax on YouTube and he will take your soul. Yeah, but it's, sorry, it's too late. I'm sorry. It's already happened.